Hey, what's up guys? Man, it's gonna be a nice day today. Sun shining, clear skies, light breeze, about 55. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I'm sitting here next to this gorgeous piece of machinery, the Miller Dynasty 210DX. And this is a TIG welder, uh, AC, NDC, inverter machine and uh, we're going to be welding some mild steel um, tubing for the intercooler and then we're going to switch over to some stainless and I'll give you an explanation but we're going to be welding some quarters uh, to some stainless pipe to keep the hose clamps from uh, allowing the pipe to slip through because we don't have a bead roller and uh, that's the best thing I can think of to make it happen. So let's go ahead and get these welded up real quick. And uh, we're going to use some old crappy uh, filler rods that's been sitting around for a little while. And uh, we're using my TIG finger. Uh, we'll use the normal TIG finger for to start with. And then as the torch heats up, we'll... Uh, We'll get after uh, maybe the TIG finger extreme. But anyhow, uh, I can't do anything without uh, my helmet. Let me grab my Sentinel A50 and uh, my glasses and let's get after it, huh? So I'm going to keep you guys over there for a little while and then maybe I'll move you closer uh, depending on how things go. Now the biggest problem with me welding is I'm blind. I'm not blind, but you know what I mean. I don't see, I have a hard time seeing my puddle. And uh, that ends up being bad for the weld, but so far so good. Let's keep going. So, I mean, it's not the prettiest thing that ever walked, but uh, I'm 100% confident that it will hold boost and uh, not break. We'll be back. Now, this one has a bit of a gap. So, we'll be doing the lay wire technique. And uh, use the same voltage same amperage we're just going to pulsate the pedal we'll lay, lay this wire in there and uh, go to town let's 
see if we can make it happening. You ready? Oops, I'm gonna need my glasses though. So we dipped our wire a little bit. We did burn a little bit of a hole. So we're going to uh, sharpen up the tungsten, let this cool off a little bit. We might have to take this, uh, this in here off because we don't want to melt that. It's the only one we have right now. We got this tungsten sharpened up. that hose off so we won't damage it. We're gonna continue this weld. This pipe getting hot quick. Oh man, dipped it. Usually takes me, eh, after not TIG welding for an hour or so, or for a month or so, it usually takes me a good hour or so to figure it out. Got me a big turd right there, because I gapped it, uh, and it's, it's the part that shows, so that's cool, but I don't care. Uh, you know, it'll hold my, my other welders down, so... I did what I could do. Hopefully it doesn't leak real bad. Looks like it could have a little, little leak right there. 
but what we'll do is uh, we'll run it, you know, because why not? Um, we'll have to make sure that those globs in there aren't uh, capable of falling out. I don't think they are, but there's some big ones in there. That would make a mess out of the motor. So we'll get a chisel, just make sure those won't come off. Maybe we'll reach in there with the file belt sander. I don't think we can get to them. We might be able to, we'll let it cool off. We'll hit it with the file belt sander. We'll grab those radiator tubes and uh, get a gander at those. Oh. Close the welder off. We're just going to tack it. We're not going to get excited and do any craziness. We're going to use the same. Uh, we're going to use the same uh, tungsten. We are going to use uh, stainless uh, filler rod. Heads or tails? Heads. Right. Let's see if I can tack it. We might not need a filler rod. That quarter glows red so fast. What do you think guys? I don't even need any filler rod. Now I'm hoping that this isn't going to cause a leak. Now you guys might think I'm crazy. Um, but the last thing you want to do is uh, leave yourself unprotected and be driving down the road and have your um, radiator hose blow up. I did melt a little bit of the quarter away, so I had to touch it up a little. Let me grab a wire wheel or wire brush. I'll tell you a secret: when you're when you're working with stainless, you have to use a stainless steel wire brush because if you don't, uh, the wire brush will impregnate the stainless with. Uh, carbon steel and uh, 
and it'll rust. So what do you think? All right, fellas. Okay, now we're gonna turn the welder off, go install this pipe, see how we like it. Then we'll take the top one off. And uh, bring it in. We'll get some more quarters. We'll do that one up. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Quarter. Quarter. Tails. Heads. Heads. So this uh, coolant expensive as hell. So we're gonna get a drain pan and have it ready just in case something is uh, out of sorts. Okay, there's a gallon. Tell you what, should look just like tranny fluid. I was like, damn, is that transmission fluid? No, 
and it is gross. Just in case you wondered. Now it's got me wondering. Oh. Oh, this is Pro Series. I didn't work on this truck busting my ass all day to get screwed at the end. So uh, even though the tight cock was leaking and it wouldn't shut and ended up having to take it out, lose all the fuel when I put it in, I finally found a plug over in Crystal Gold Radiator. Plug that. You don't need a pet cock in there anyways. So that hole's been plugged. Well, I was at about six gallons in it and I uh had six gallons in it and I had it running and it shut down so the fuel level sensor is working I think I'll leave this cap off for a little while that I took all of the foam out of there. I think I did. It would be super unfortunate if that was not the case. Uh, I think I remember seeing up in there. I know I took the one out of up there. The radiator wasn't plugged. So, worst case scenario is it starts running hot. Now, though, I gotta take the oil cooler off. See what's happening. See any leaks? A little bit of oil, or a little bit of fuel, or, uh, diesel fuel leaking because my return line's not long enough. That was a hundred dollar mistake.
got no horns charging good it's got good oil pressure uh, we don't have an amp gauge working we don't have a boost gauge working we don't have a fuel pressure because it only goes to 60 uh, but air is right at 125 so that's good I didn't hear the dryer purge but you know it's okay Oh, there's two. Oh, that's inches mercury for that. Okay. Brakes don't work, crews don't work, uh, fan don't work, so that's cool. Might be just the switch arrangement. Also the uh, The air compressor is still pumping 140 PSI now, so the governor is not working. I could have those lines backwards. I don't though. Well, I mean, not bad. It's not overheating uh, of course it's not hot out but you know the water got warm but not hot fan doesn't work uh, no surprise we still need one clamp for the one side of the uh, turbo pipes but you know what I'm super happy with the way it's going cooling system check fabbing up the pipes for the intercooler check need one clamp uh, need to replumb in the uh, the manifold pressure gauge do the coolant there's a water temp gauge right here in this down pipe and then there's a coolant the engine temp gauge that needs to be hooked up on the motor itself we'll do those on Saturday we'll do that clamp on Saturday we'll talk to the wiring guy about the jakes we got to find a, the clutch switch and put it in and uh, you know but so far so good don't forget to like comment subscribe we'll see ya